This video is about analyzing lifetime data and also about the Kaplan-Meier estimator. So the first uh, thing that we can uh, calculate or that we can try to calculate if we have uh, an historical data set is the mean time between failures for a machine. And that is an important uh, quantity that tells you something about the reliability of that uh, machine. It's relatively easy to do if we have a data set only with historical times until failure available, because then you can just take the mean of those times until failure and then you basically have an estimate for the mean time between failures. What we will see is that if preventive maintenance has also been performed in the past, then it's more difficult to determine an uh, estimate for the mean time between failures. And in any case, we should realize that the mean time between failures is just a number, so a single number. And if you would like to determine appropriate maintenance policies, then you need more information than only this uh, mean. So let's start with a very simple example. Here we have a machine that has broken down uh, six times in the past. First time after 4.8 hours. Then after such a breakdown, we do uh, corrective maintenance immediately. We assume that uh, that takes an glitchable amount of time and that it also makes the machine as good as new again. And then we have a second failure at time 13.2. So the difference between the 13.2 and the 4.8, that's the 8.4. And that's in the second uh, duration uh, until the failure occurs. So you see that we obtain six uh, times until failure. And if we then take the mean of those six durations, then we have a valid estimate for the mean time between failures in this case. So we just sum them, gives 42, divided by six gives you then seven hours. Of course, here you can also say that the total length of the horizon is 42. We have six failures, so that also immediately gives you the 42 divided by 6. So that's an estimate for the mean time between failures. Then we will talk about the distribution function and the reliability function of a machine. So let's start with the distribution function that's denoted by capital F and that gives you the probability for any value of t that the unit breaks down before uh, reaching that uh, ht. So you can for instance talk about f1 and that's the probability that failure occurs before reaching the age of one hour. If we talk about hours, so it could, for instance, be 0.2. And then F2 is the probability that failure occurs before reaching the age of uh, two hours. The probability is, of course, going up if the age is going up. So this could, for instance, be 0.3. So you see that this function F is non-decreasing. Uh, it's only going uh, up over time. Then related to this function, we have the reliability function, and that gives you the probability that failure does not occur before reaching a certain uh, age. So it's the probability that the unit survives until reaching a certain age. And this function is then non-increasing. And of course, the probability that the unit survives is 1 minus the probability that the unit breaks down before reaching a certain age. Then if we have a data set only consisting of failures, the empirical reliability function can then be used as an estimate of the reliability function. And here you see how that uh, looks like. So in our data set, the shortest time until failure was 2.8 hours. That means that we make a step downwards uh, at time 2.8. And the size of that step downwards is 1 over 6 because we have uh, 6 durations in our data set. And then the second duration has a length of 4.8 hours, so again at time 4.8 we can make a step downwards of size 1 over 6 and then you see at the end we reach value uh, 0. So this is the empirical reliability function uh, as an estimate of the reliability function that you can make if you only have times until failure in the data set. However, it turns out that preventive maintenance has also been performed in the past at times 10.7 and 27.5 and that should then also be taken into account in the analysis. We make the assumption that preventive maintenance is also perfect, so it also makes the machine as good as new again. And here you see how that changes the data set. So we now have preventive maintenance at time 10.7, so then we have a duration from time 4.8 until time 10.7 of length 5.9 and at the end of the duration preventive maintenance has been performed. That also means that the second time into failure is only 2.5 hours instead of the 8.4 hours uh, that we had uh, when we were uh, not considering the preventive maintenance uh, intervention. And here something similar happens. So we now have eight durations, two of them end with preventive maintenance. And then we talk about sensor data, because we have a sensor duration, if we have a duration that does not end with a failure. 
So here we have seen that we have sensor durations uh, if preventive maintenance has been performed. There's also another reason, another potential uh, source of uh, sensor durations, and that is when we stop observing the machine without having a failure or a preventive maintenance action. So then we have also a machine that survives for some uh, amount of time, but without having a failure at the end. So that can also be a reason for a sensor's duration. Very important is that we don't uh, omit sensor duration because they contain information. And what we learn from sensor duration with length uh, t is that the time into failure is greater than t. So if we ignore that duration, then we underestimate the reliability of the machine that we are talking about. So that's about sensor durations. If a duration is not censored, then it's called an event duration. So we basically just have two types of durations, event durations that end with a failure, and sensor durations uh, are durations that end with preventive maintenance. The next question is now how we can determine an, uh, an estimation for the mean time between failures and also for the reliability function when part of the data is sensors, as we have over here. And in order to do that, we can use the Kaplan-Meier technique. So that's the technique that we need to use if we have uh, lifetime data with durations that are partly censored. The first thing that we will do is we will replace the third column here by a column in which we indicate whether durations are censored or not. So it's just yes or no. And then the moments in time at which uh, events occur are not relevant. So we can remove the first column from the table. That gives us this uh, table. And then the next step of the Kaplan-Meier technique is that we sort the durations in ascending order from the smallest to the, uh, to the longest duration. And then we get uh, this. Then there's also a convention that says that if you have durations with equal length, then the event durations should be listed before the sensor durations. Here that's not relevant because we have two durations with the same length, but they are both not censored. And then we are going to calculate Kaplan-Meier probabilities. And uh, those are basically the steps downwards in the estimation of the reliability function. What we will do is initially we will give each duration the same probability and because we have eight durations they all get probability 1 over 8 to make sure that the total probability is equal to 1. And then we are going to uh, consider the sensor durations uh, one by one and for each sensor duration we spread its probability over the longer uh, durations. So we first uh, consider the sensor duration with length 3.4 that had probability 0.125, and that will then be uh, spread over the longer durations. So all the longer durations, uh, 0.025, will be added to those probabilities. And then what we will then get is the following. So the interpretation is, we have a sensor duration with length 3.4. The duration is censored, so the real time until failure is longer. And then we assume that it's equally likely that the real time into failure uh, is the length of one of the longer five durations. We will then do the same for the second uh, sensor duration, so this 5.9 is also censored, and that means that the point 15 will be divided over the two longer durations. That's what we see over here, and then we get the following as the uh, final list of uh, Kaplan-Meier probabilities. You see now that the sensor durations have probability zero, so we can leave them out from the table. And there are also two durations that have equal length, and they can just be uh, combined into one duration with probability point, uh, 0.3. So here we do this manually. If we are going to do this in Excel when we have larger data sets, then you should of course try to use a more efficient uh, method to do this, and not do this one by one manually because then it will take too much time and it's also risky that you make mistakes. So this is basically to explain um, how we can, uh, how this method uh, works. Here we have uh, left out the sensor durations and we've also combined the two events durations and then based uh, on these probabilities we can determine the estimation of the mean time between failures. Um, also maybe good to give an interpretation. So what we have, what, uh, what the interpretation of the probabilities are, is that with probability 0.225, the machine breaks down after 8.1 hours. So that's how these probabilities can be uh, interpreted. 
Uh, then the mean time between failures, so we now have that the machine breaks down after 2.5 hours with probability 0.125, breaks down after 2.8 hours with probability also 0.125, and if we take the um, sum of all those uh, products, then we have the estimation of the mean time between failures. So in this case, that's 6.108 hours. And based on the Kaplan-Meier probabilities, we can also make a graph of the Kaplan-Meier estimator of the reliability function. And basically what I already said is that the Kaplan-Meier probabilities uh, determine the sizes of the steps downwards. So we had that the final Kaplan-Meier probability of 2.5 was 0.125. So at time 2.5, we make a step downwards of size 0.125. And we do the same at uh, 2.8. Because we also had an event duration with length 2.8 and the couple of my corresponding couple of my probability was also 0.125 so this is the couple of my estimator of the reliability function gives you an idea how the real reliability function uh, looks like that will be important later on Important if you're make, going to make that graph is that we only have uh, horizontal and vertical line segments in the graph, so there should be no diagonal uh, lines. And another note is that if the longest duration is censored, then we cannot uh, spread that uh, corresponding probability over longer durations. So in that case, um, the probabilities of the longest censored duration will not be designed to any events durations, but those probabilities will just cancel out. That also means that the sum of the probabilities will no longer be 1, and that implies then that the kaplan meier estimator of the reliability function will never reach 0. So then you get something like this, or so step function that will never reach 0. So at some point it's just uh, constant. And if that's the case, and it's also more uh, difficult, or maybe not even possible, to determine a valid estimation for the mean time uh, between failures based on the kaplan meier uh, probabilities. The benefits of the Kaplan-Meier estimator are that it can easily be determined, so we do not need to make any, any assumption about the data. We don't need to assume a certain parametric lifetime distribution, and it also immediately gives you a good impression of how the real lifetime distribution looks like. Also some drawbacks, so the first one is that it is uh, unrealistic that we only assign probabilities to discrete points in time. So we have only assigned positive probabilities to times at which uh, failure has occurred in the past. And it is also very difficult to optimize maintenance policies based on this uh, step function, so based on this Kaplan-Meier estimator. And that is the reason that we will now continue with continuous parametric lifetime distributions, but then the Kaplan-Meier uh, reliability functions are still uh, useful because they can be uh, used to determine whether parametric lifetime distributions provide a good fit to the data.